everyone. Welcome to the Untold Stories podcast. Today, we're talking about the how, where, and whens of fishing. Randy Tao lets you in on the three easy steps that you need to catch any fish. Let's get right into it. What are those three easy steps? Well, I'll tell you what, everybody that's going to go fishing, you have to have an idea what you're going to do. What kind of fish am I going to fish for? Am I lake fishing, going to go offshore, going to go inshore? And a lot of people think there's all these secrets and, and oh, these spots that no one else knows or has been to. Every place, if it's a good spot, somebody's already been there. So I'm going to talk a little bit about kind of the basic things you need to know to go fishing anywhere, whether you're in the Keys or you're in on the West Coast or you're in a lake or, or whatever you want to go do, there's certain principles that apply. And one of them, kind of the first one we'll talk about is, is how. Okay, how am I going to go fishing? Do I have a boat? Am I going to fish off the bank? Am I going to use artificial? Am I going to use bait? So as you're trying to plan your trip and what you're going to do, that's really important, obviously, to prepare to go fishing. Although some people grab a rod and they just go. They don't think anything about it, whether it's a lure or a, you know, a frozen shrimp on the end. But if you, if you kind of take these steps and you apply them to what you're going to do, it's going to help you. Because let's face it, there's no such thing as good luck, right? It's all preparation, opportunity, and timing, being at that right place at the right time. Really, 40 years of guiding, I can tell you, it's not luck. It certainly, I have been blessed to be in places that I didn't think I would be at at the right time, but I was and, uh, and learned a lot. So the how is pretty important. So start with that to get your equipment together. If you're going to get bait, where am I going to go get my bait? If I'm going to catch it, if I'm going to buy it, I got to keep it alive to get from point A to point B. You're going to need to keep it alive in my boat. So it sounds like a lot and it sounds complicated, but it's really not because it's routine. Once you do it and once that's the way you're going to be fishing, it's pretty simple after that. I wanted to ask you, because I know the answer to this question, but I want everybody else to kind of have a little bit of an idea of how you work and how your mind works. And I wanted to ask you, when exactly or at what point in the day or at what point with a charter do you decide where you're going to go fishing and what you're going to target? Well, as a, as a guide, I've got to figure that out when I leave the dock. So in the mornings, you know, for me, a lot of times, and I'm going to get into to this as we go into this podcast and talk about it, but there's things that you have to recognize with the wind, big a big thing is wind for us here is it a north wind a south wind an east wind is it going to be blowing all day um what are the tides you know what do i think these people want to do what do they want to catch most people that i fish with they just want to go fishing they want to have yeah. a good time and i'm going to put them on whatever i think is going to be the best success yeah. for us to do based on the conditions and what we have to deal with because remember you can have a wish list three pages long, but if the conditions are not in your favor to yep. do it, you're going to struggle. And why waste that time doing something that's not going to work? Um, there's always something to catch in the keys. That's the beauty of being down here. There's something that you can find to do. So, you know, it's funny because I've been asked that question many times. And when I leave the dock and we ha have a conversation with my people and we're kind of getting a game plan together, my mind now is racing and I'm looking at the tide and I'm trying to figure out and I've got about a mile, mile and a half from the Lorelei to the intercoastal marker. And at that point, I'm either going left or right. So whatever, whatever it's going to be that day, I've got to make that decision in my head that, okay, this is what I'm doing. I'm sticking to my plan. I'm going to grind it out, you know, good, bad, or indifferent. This is what we're going to do. And, and that's when I really decide what's yeah. going on. If I've had a slow day, and I'm not doing much, I'm constantly going to the next spot, going to the next spot, trying this and trying that. Some days I'll go to two spots all day and I'll have a phenomenal day because it's it's right. You know, the condition's right, the tide's right, whatever it is, the fish are there. But, you know, there's days you struggle. That's part of it. it it's, it's that way for everybody. There's no easy, easy day. It looks easy, but, you know, there's stuff that go to it. So, 
throughout the day, if fishing's good, I, I hope it's good in the morning and it really takes the edge off for the rest of the day. I had a trip um, a few years ago. We didn't, we had no fish. It was one o'clock in the afternoon. We're on our way home. And literally I drove by an overhanging tree on a shoreline and it just, it looked right. You know, the water looked good. The water was clean. It was high. It was moving. The wind was in the right direction. And I told my guys, I go, hey, let's stop and give this spot 10 or 15 minutes. I just, it really looks good. So now the other side of that little story real quick is I'm always looking for opportunities. I'm always looking for a condition that might favor a fish being there. Because you never know. You're, you're driving over fish all the time. You have no idea because you can't see them. They're not going to wave to you when you go by. So you have to be, you, your mindset has to always be at attention looking for something. We spun around, went back to the tree, and we caught 30 snook and 20 reds. And we made wow. the day on our way home, stopping at that one spot. We caught 50 fish. Yep. And it was just one of those things had I not been paying attention or looking on my phone, I'd have probably went right by it. But I was still in the hunt. And that's what it is. It's a game. It's a hunt. You know, you're looking for that, everything to line up. So, you know, that's that's really how it goes. And, you know, the how, we had, we had bait, we had our rods, we had everything ready. So we were prepared if something came along. The where, I was in the right place at the right time. When? was the right time and and we capitalized yeah. so that's that's some of the things that goes through my head when i'm fishing and when i leave the dock but um getting back to the to the where you know most people think oh i need a gps so i can have all these secret spots i've got over 1200 spots on my gps and i could give them to you and you could go to all of them chances are you might not catch much because you don't understand when to be there or how to fish it. You know, people that spend time on the water, they learn the spot and they learn how to do what they're doing intimately because they do it over and over and over and this doesn't work and they try this. So when people say, oh, I've been fishing for 30 years. Well, no, you haven't. You fish five days a, a year for 30 years. <laughs> you know, you don't, you don't have it figured out because you haven't put enough time in and even even on the internet you know watching youtube videos and watching fishing shows which are all great what goes into making those work is so time consuming you have no idea they shorten it up obviously for for the show and to make it look like it's pretty routine but some of those shows are time consuming and you struggle putting it together so the where is about being uh open to what does the water look like What's the tide doing? What's the wind doing? Those things that I talked about earlier. I like the wind and the current going the same direction because most of the time it gives me a much better water flow and it's like a conveyor belt, right? So the water's moving, the fish are moving, the fish are feeding into the tide, the bait's moving. If I don't have any current and that water's just stagnant, it's like everything just kind of floats around. You know, there's no direction to it. So you might have some fish to the left or to the right, but you don't get them lined up like you do when you have current. So I like current and the wind. When the wind's against the current, therefore the the wind, the current gets slowed down because the wind pushes it down, slows it down. So those are just some of the things that once you start learning what it takes to look for, then it becomes a lot more interesting and fun because you start finding these places on your own. You don't know if someone's ever fished there and it's not something that your buddy told you to go do you have done it on your own. And that, that's what it's all about. That's the exciting part and the reward about fishing offshore or backcountry. That's, that's kind of the goal. But you need to understand what to look for. So the win is a big part of it because do you go in the morning? Do you go at night? Do you go, you know, on a full moon, on a new moon? There are so many different things about when to go fishing that I look at it because... I know what to look for. There's two types of fishing for me, whether you go fishing or you do not go fishing. Those are the two types of fishing. Now, it is, it is important to understand, though, when, because timing is so important. You know, the timing of being in that spot, maybe it's a low tide spot. 
Maybe it's a high tide spot, a, you know, an outgoing, an incoming. So all of those little variables make make up such a huge part of the puzzle. And if you can document when you've had success, so you've been to this spot, it was on an incoming tide, it was in the afternoon, it was in April, you know, and each month of the year is different too. Sometimes fish aren't in the area in, in a certain time of the year. They're there other times. So you pay attention to all these things. And after a while, you build up kind of your own little database of where I was and what happened and, and what works and, oh, this is an incoming tide. So where you stretch that out a little bit is when you start going to these places on those conditions, you've had good results and it's not working. Because remember, they have tails. So they're going to swim to the next spot or they're going to swim on the other side of the flat. So sometimes you got to look around a little bit if they're not there because they might they might have moved a little bit. So it's a lot of trial and error. It it is, that's but that's part. that's part of it. Yeah. You know, but but it's important and those are basic just basic rules of thumb to go fishing. If you kind of start with stuff like that, it will help you understand how to go do it because if I give you those GPS numbers and you go and you say, "Man, you sent me to this snapper spot. I didn't catch anything." Well, when did you go? Oh, it was a. It was in January on a north wind. Well, you can't go out there on a north wind. You know that's just the wrong time of year. September, October, live pilchards. You know, there's a there's a reason. There's a story to back up the success of it. So that's where you get to learn about these things. It's not so much reading it in a in a uh, in a book or or finding it on online as much as it is going to do it and having your own experience, there's nothing better than learning back there on your own. I try to tell my friends, look, don't tell me where you were, because I'll figure out. If you had a good day, I'll figure out what you did. And and that's the fun of it. You know, I like finding my own stuff, and if you've ever fished with me, we're usually not in a crowd. Yeah, well, and things are constantly changing with hurricanes and with the red tide and all the stuff going on in the Everglades, it's it's constantly evolving. So what used to be a good spot five years ago is probably not there anymore. 100%. And you got to go find where the fish went because they're still there. Yep. They're just in a different spot. And, you know, it's that happens more than you think. And especially you remember Hurricane Irma. Yep. And we went out there a couple of days after the hurricane and I remember you taking pictures and, and kind of documenting the sargassum grass back there. Well, that sargassum grass was gone three days later. And I think it settled to the bottom and it choked out a lot of that stuff in the backcountry. We're seeing the effects of it now. You know, here it is, uh, tarpon season 2022. We're, we're kind of at the, the end of April right now. And when the wind blows, we've had 25 knot winds all week. And it gets the, the Florida Bay and the Flamingo area so muddy, it's unfishable. There's nothing to filter it. You know, we have issues with water quality. We have issues with algae blooms. We have salinity problems. We have so much stuff going on in the backcountry that is not caused by one thing. It's a combination of a lot of things that's going on. Things like this with the grass settling doesn't help it any. So, you know, rather than go back there and struggle to try to catch a snook or a red. I know how tough it's going to be. I stay around home, been tarpon fishing. There's some tarpon around, bonefish. So I just changed my game plan up a little bit and it's been working great. I think that's it. I mean, my last question for you was, what would be your biggest tip to somebody getting started? Well, be patient and try to start small. You know, for example, if you're going to go patch fishing. You know, pick out an area you want to fish, whether it's conch reef or pickles or, or, you know, alligator light, and go out there and just look, look down. The water's crystal clear. Look down and see what the reef looks like. You're in 25 or 30 feet of water. You get an idea of what you're looking for. You're not going to anchor up on grass. You want to anchor up on some rock or, you know, a little patch reef. You want to get up current of it. Never drop your anchor around any kind of coral or or the reef itself. You want to get outside of it because there's always sand outside rock. And drop your anchor there and, and let your anchor line back over near the, the, uh, the patch. You don't have to sit on top of it. Sit in front of it 
and let those fish come out of the reef to you. And and really, it's it's about that simple, you know, to do something like that, have a couple of blocks of chum, live shrimp, and I, I'm sure you will catch snappers and you'll have some fun doing it. And then as you start to get experienced in catching them and doing things, then you ramp it up and you go, hey, I want to catch a mutton snapper. Or I want to catch a bigger yellowtail. And, and that's what's fun about fishing and learning because as you get into it, you're going to need a heavier rod. You're going to need a cast net. You're going to need a bally hoop. You know, those are the things that you want to buy out of the reason I need them. You know, you just don't go to the store and get $10,000 worth of stuff and go, what am I going to do with it? If you start small and you go do it, you'll see what you need. You'll understand, I need these hooks. I need this leader. I need these jig heads. And, and that's the way to do it. So ease into it. Get familiar with the type of fishing you're going to do, and uh, you'll have a great time doing it. And that's really what it's all about. Hopefully that'll get people yeah. started, you know, and, and just yeah. remember, you know, like I said, the, the lucky thing, I don't know about luck. I, I just think so many times I've been at a place at the right time. You'll know it. You'll know when you're at the right place at the right time because it's, it's a magical moment where the fish are biting or the things are working. You know, when they're not working, they're not working. You know, everything's against you, whether it's the conditions or, or, or uh, you know, no fish even. So just keep that in mind and you'll have a great time doing it. And I hope this helps. And until next time. Yeah. All right. That's the Randy Tao Untold Stories podcast. Mm-hmm.